Distinguished guests, let me start out by congratulating our hosts for making this year's TRT World Forum a reality. I am sure that it took more effort to organize this year's event than three previous meetings combined. So thank you for your hard work and extraordinary commitment. It is a pleasure to address this distinguished audience today. Looking back, last year's forum seems like a lifetime ago. Browsing last year's photo gallery, I found myself thinking that we took so many things for granted. Conventions, movie theaters, birthday parties. The pandemic changed our lives in so many ways. Surgical masks and disinfectant bottles are now part of everyday life. We flinch at the sight of actors entering a crowded room without their face masks on television. International air travel, once perfectly ordinary, has become nearly elusive. Even grocery shopping is something that requires planning. Against the backdrop of those massive changes in our daily lives, the 2020 TRT World Forum focuses on a key question. What awaits the international order after COVID-19? Do we go back to business as usual? Do we let fear get the best of us? Or do we build more resilient political, economic, and social systems? More specifically, what kind of future do we envision for our children? Esteemed participants, before answering those questions, let us take a step back and take stock of our lessons learned. First, the COVID-19 pandemic established that no country can fully isolate itself from the world. The way that the virus spread to the most remote corners of the world within weeks would have been unimaginable in the past. From the global supply chain to local communities, we have witnessed the near collapse of our global order. At the same time, we remember that deep down, we are all human. The second lesson of the pandemic was that people and nations are stronger together. In the face of a once a generation crisis, we turn to each other for support. We counted on each other to flatten the curve and keep our healthcare system going. Again, looking for a cure, we pulled our resources and broke together our top minds. Interconnectedness may have seemed like a weakness, but it also proved to be a source of strength. During this difficult time, Turkey's actions reflected those lessons learned. From the United States and Europe to Africa and Asia, we answered the call of our friends and allies. The Turkish people shared their surgical masks and ventilators and personal protective equipment with fellow humans around the world. Under the leadership of our president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, we delivered a message of hope to the world. There is hope after despair. There are many suns after darkness. On the home front, too, did the Turkish people rise to the challenge of COVID-19. Our medical workers, including doctors and nurses, have been on the front lines against our invisible enemy. Our service sec sector, too, played an essential role in helping communities across Turkey to meet their needs. Dear guests, the third and final lesson we must draw from history is that humanity tends to point fingers rather than come together in the face of crises. From the Inquisition to World War II, people told themselves that others were responsible for their problems. Unfortunately, we face a similar danger today. Some societies blamed COVID-19 pandemic on immigrants. Others use the public health emergency to target, intimidate, and alienate minorities, starting with Muslims. Contrary to conventional wisdom, such developments are not taking place in the developing world. We witness similar efforts in countries like France, whose government is allegedly creating a register of Muslim children. Elsewhere in Europe, we see far-right extremists wielding enough power to dictate policy. At the same time, Europe's Turkish community, a minority, faces aggressive discrimination, even though 
Özlem Türeci and her husband, Uğur Şahin, discovered a promising vaccine. For everyone's sake, we urge our European friends in particular to get in front of anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim sentiment before history repeats itself. Instead of rejecting comparisons to the demonization of European Jewry in 1920s, let us work together to reject racism and extremism. The key to preventing future tragedies is to shed light on the facts. In this regard, I would like to acknowledge the extraordinary work of TRT's international channels. TRT World, along with TRT Arabic, Russian and German, report the news with a focus on people and values. They have developed an authentic language in news reporting to give voice to the voiceless. Dear participants, since the COVID-19 pandemic affected all aspects of life, we must augment out efforts to combat disinformation and hatred with complementary steps in other areas, including foreign policy. Turkey believes in working together to overcome the COVID-19 challenge and to build a better future. International cooperation, however, can only thrive on the basis of equality, mutual interests, and shared values. That is the message we send to our friends and allies, old and new, as humanity turns over a fresh leaf. With the European Union, we desire and pursue a closer relationship. Our cooperation and collaboration is key to countering the message of hate and discrimination in Europe. Treating Turkey with respect is the Union's only way of proving that it has nothing against Muslims around the world. Friendship, however, is incompatible with double talk and condescension. Therefore, the idea that Turkey must earn Europe's friendship by making concessions is both unfair and unrealistic. Instead, we tell our European counterparts that dialogue is only way forward. Same goes for our long-standing strategic partnership with the United States. In recent years, Turkey, a NATO ally, has been treated with unprecedented hostility in Washington, D.C. Our unwavering commitment to fighting terrorists, whether they call themselves PKK or Daesh, has been incomprehensibly misportrayed. Ironically, the U.S. foreign policy doesn't necessarily serve American interests either. It is our sincere hope that the United States, under its new administration, will repair its strained relationship with its traditional allies and show due respect to their vital interests. Only with respect can we start working towards a more resilient and more representative world order. Dear guests, as humanity becomes less dependent on any single nation for political leadership and economic growth, we must build a new order that looks out for everyone's rights and interests. In this new period, we must commit to promoting interdependence against domination, solidarity against rivalry, and cooperation against competition. Going forward, humanity must focus on two key areas of improvement. First, we must create new alternatives to the existing global supply chain to improve our economic order's ability to absorb future shocks. There's no reason to believe that COVID-19 pandemic will be the last public health emergency in history. As the world becomes more and more interconnected, there is a good chance that we will experience similar challenges in the future. In the anticipation of those crises, we must establish mechanisms that improve our odds. Obviously, the new global supply chain should serve to create opportunities and empower disadvantaged nations to serve as a source of peace. Turkey, with its young and skilled population, is more than ready to contribute to that process. Secondly, there is need to double down on multilateralism and international organizations. 
Starting with the United Nations, we must reform and improve our organizations so that they can keep the peace and facilitate human progress for decades to come. Needless to say, there is clear and overdue need to reform United Nations Security Council. As our president repeatedly said in the past, the post-World War II balance of power no longer reflects the realities of our world. To bridge that gap and make the United Nations relevant again, we must all accept that the world is bigger than five. Only by reforming the Security Council can we ensure that the change trickles down to other parts of our international system. Turkey, as a long-standing advocate of UN reform, is willing and able to contribute to a meaningful reform agenda internationally. Once again, I appreciate this opportunity to address the TRT World Forum and offer my heartfelt congratulations to Organization Committee. I look forward to, the, to following the informative and interesting discussions over the next two days. Thank you. Thank you so much.